All right, hello everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Overwatch Weekly. I uh, have quite a few things to cover this week, not too many, uh, but a decent amount. Um, I will say that I will be covering the information that we have about the Overwatch Archives event at the end of this video, just because I know there are going to be some people who have a desire to not be spoiled about anything about the event going into it, so um, just keep that in mind, that there are going to be stories before that. Typically I would talk about game-related stories and event-related stuff at the beginning, but because we know so much about the event, um, uh, I'll kind of have a non-spoilery part here towards the end, and then I'll kind of go into what we know and whatnot. So, uh, just letting you know that beforehand. But let's go into the first story, which is a an interesting one, uh, to say the least. Uh, the story is Blizzard is banning the OK symbol in Overwatch League Arena, the Blizzard Arena. Uh, uh, you know the when you put your pointer finger and your thumb together, put your other three fingers up in the air, that symbol, uh, because it is a white power symbol. Now, this is a report. Uh, I don't know how necessarily true it is, but I believe it is. So the story uh, came about a few days ago, but I'll kind of read some background information. I'm reading an article here uh, from boundingintocomics.com. I have not seen... Um, anything else about this um it's something interesting um but uh the article we link down below if you want to check it out but the article reads blizzard has reportedly forbidden the okay hand symbol in the overwatch league arena which is the blizzard arena claiming it's a white power symbol. Esports reporter Rod Breslau, also known uh, more commonly as Slasher, uh, reported that Blizzard told a fan in the Overwatch League arena they're not allowed to use the OK symbol for its association as a white power symbol after they flashed it on stream and a complaint was made to the OWL account on Twitter. Uh, there's a link to uh, a video where the uh, interview goes on. I'm not going to show it here. If you want to see it, like I said, the interview is linked, or the article is linked down below. You can check it out. But uh, Bressel's report is based on a tweet from Twitter user RebaRob22, who provided a screen cap of the tweet in question, reporting the OK symbol as a white power hand signal. Uh, RebaRob also indicated that this new policy in Blizzard as the OK symbol had been flashed in WL broadcasts throughout the season. Uh, it's a new policy because it had been flashed throughout the season. Um, another Twitter user by the name of Steel Trainer OW claims here the user threw up the OK symbol, indicating he thought it was for the old Gotham game. Uh, the Urban Dictionary describes it as the circle game where players attempt to get people to look at the OK symbol in order to be able to punch anyone who saw it. Uh, so their tweet says, I was the fan throwing up the OK symbol and I want to apologize for not knowing the context behind it. The super fans have been using it for the old Gotham game all season. But now that we know the context, it is unacceptable. Thank you for bringing this up. It will not happen again. Uh, and then continues on. Breslau indicates that Blizzard has banned the popular Pepe the Frog meme. Um, and then he also ridiculed Blizzard for their hypocrisy, indicating that they will have to ban their own characters in Yada for using the symbol in order to, con to be consistent with their policy. Obviously, it's not going to actually happen. Um, it, that was just kind of a joke. Um, but then he also said you know, some other stuff, but, you know, there, there are other people kind of making jokes about it and whatnot, so it's a very interesting, um, situation, um, the, the tweets, uh, the, the tweet from this, the, the, the original tweet of the person who had said something, uh, originally just, uh, said, who was that human trash flashing the white ha power hand signal during the interview with BK? Hope they're banned from going to further matches. Uh, and then there's a bit of something going on that it is a uh, something that the, the OK symbol is a uh, white power thing. And it, it originated in 2017. Um, 
uh, and it was at the center of an online prank and meme culture related to alt-right and white supremacy originating from anonymous message boards posted on 4chan. So, um, it was a prank that kind of then became something else. It's a very, very weird and convoluted situation, and it's a one of the problems with the whole situation, so it is very weird and strange. If you want to read more into it, like I said, there is a link in the description down below to uh, the, you know, article that I've been reading from if you want to check stuff out for yourself. Um, I, I think you should definitely read into it on your own, come up with your own, you know, opinions on it. This is a very, of course, complicated, complex issue. Um political issue in a lot of ways i want to try to avoid politics a lot as much as i can because this is a uh you know channel about a video game and i don't want to bring uh politics too much into this stuff but i think it's obviously something that is now relevant to the game i want to talk about it because i haven't seen a lot of people talking about it i don't know if i've seen any videos on it um I'm going to check right here now, but I haven't really seen any videos on it. Um, yeah, I don't really see anybody talking about it. I feel like it's something that isn't really getting talked about, so I wanted to bring it up because I also think it's an interesting issue. I'd love to hear your opinions down below um, if you knew this was something that uh, was a white power symbol because I had no idea until I was reading this story. So I'm really, really interested to hear what other people have, if they've experienced with it. Um, you know, it's obviously the kind of discussion typically I would not want to have in the comments of this video, but if you know anything about it, if it's something you have, uh, you know about, or you had experience with before this, uh, I'd love to hear what you have to say, um, down below, but we're going to move on to a more, um, casual, more, less politically driven uh, stories. And the first one uh, has to do with the Overwatch League pros. They had a uh, piece on the Overwatch League website of their opinions on Baptiste. Um, you had Animo. You had uh, Animo, of course, in New York Excelsior. Boink of the Houston Outlaws. Shaz of the LA Gladiators. Roki of the Toronto Defiant. Kyo of the Chengdu Hunters. Neptuno of the Philadelphia Fusion, Fozix of the Washington Justice, all give their thoughts on Baptiste and how they think he will work into the meta. Um, and I, I think it'll be really interesting to see how it goes on, of course. The way we saw him in week one obviously had some interesting stuff. The way it'll carry on will be very interesting. But I'm excited to see what we get there with that. Um, so if you want to check out what they said about Baptiste, you can check that out down below. The next story is a, another Overwatch League um, retirement story. Uh, this one has to do with Effect. Uh, Effect, of course, if you do not know, a player formerly now for the Dallas Fuel. Uh, in Season 1, he had some mental health issues, and he returned to um, South Korea to deal with them. Uh, and now he is retiring as a kind of, you know, because he, he still has these these problems, these depression issues and all sort of stuff, and he's retiring to move on. Um, and, but I think, it's, you know, I talked about this a little bit last week with um, players retiring, and I made a video on it on Friday talking about um, players retiring. Is that an issue um, that there are so many players retiring from the Overwatch League for mental health issues, for, uh, you know, potentially overworking and whatnot, for, you know, instead of playing professionally, moving to streaming instead? It's a very interesting topic that I think has been something to look at. But this is uh, another instance, you know, right after all these other players are retiring of another player uh, retiring because mental health issues, and you wonder if those are issues that the league itself are kind of unfortunately worsening um, for players. Uh, very interesting situation. I'm excited to see 
um, what effects feature holds. Um, if he does ever make a return to pro gaming, if he just does other stuff, I know he posted the video on Twitter recently of him playing the piano. So um, I'm, I hope he has a very very good future. Hopefully, he has some stuff going on in his life. Um, that that is great and that is good and it going forward. But we'll have to see as we get closer to um, you know him being 100% with his mental health. Uh, this next story, uh, very, very lighthearted. Um, I feel like after these you know, two of the three stories being somewhat, uh, I don't want to say depressing, but somewhat uh, serious, a much more lighthearted story. Uh, the Fine Brothers, if you do not know, YouTube channel, they have a React series where they have people play games, and in their most recent episode, Jake, of course, the... Houston Outlaws player uh, was just playing with some some people who did not know that Jake was a pro player, and it was it was kind of entertaining. It was kind of funny to watch because you're just like this, you know, these people are sitting here. They have absolutely no idea that they're getting stunted on by a pro player. They're just like, oh man, this dude. They're like, oh dude, how'd you do that? And then he's sitting here like, I'm getting paid to do this, and they don't even know. So if you want to watch it, I'll have that link down below. But now. I'm going to start talking about Overwatch Archives. I do want to say, as I said, I will open up by first talking about some of the non-spoilery stuff. So if you want the details on when Archives is going to be happening, I will give you some of that. And then we'll go into some of the more spoilery stuff about it, some of the more information that we have about it. So, we have the event coming next Tuesday, April 16th. And it'll be running from April 16th through May 6th. It will, of course, have new items, new skins, um, and whatnot, as we get with every new event. Beyond that, of course, is when you start getting into the more spoilery information on it. So if that is everything you want to uh, hear uh, about Overwatch Archives, like I said, coming next week, next Tuesday, April 16th, running till May 6th. Um, but there are some other things about it that uh, can be discovered, and there's some other things about it that I want to talk about. So, like I said, if that is all you want to see, thank you for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video. But for those of you who are here to hear everything about the Archives event, some things that we know. Of course, we know the name of the event now. Uh, the new mission is Storm Rising. And we have, of course, tons of information about this through some of the teasers we have gotten recently. So the first thing we got was a newspaper article, in air quotes, newspaper article coming from the Havana Sun, or Habana Sun. Uh, it is written in Spanish, but there's a translation down below. And it is about a rum distillery and rum company known as Don Rumbotico. And it's about this family that owns this rum company, this rum distillery, and they were bought out by this company that had a ton of money, um, and they originally didn't want to sell it, but just stuff really, bad stuff started happening, their factory burned down, all this other stuff, so like, clearly these, this company was doing things very shady uh, against them, and then eventually they bought it out for, lesser, for a, a lower price than what they had originally offered, because at this point they were like, well, <laughs> clearly these people are just going to scam us out of it. Um, and it becomes very clear in, in a lot of ways. You kind of get the idea that you are dealing with Talon. They're the ones buying this. And then there was a little extra story at the bottom about a hurricane coming. Storm Rising is the name of the event. Interesting. Next, we got a little Twitter video that I want to play for you. Uh, so I can then talk about it here in a second. But I'm going to play this video for you real quick. And then I will come back and talk about it. Commander Morrison, I have a proposal. We're going at catching Doomfist the wrong way. He's clean, but his accountant, Maximilian? Follow the money and you'll find the dirt you need. I know you're worried about sending the strike team out again after what happened with Reinhardt, but I've been working with them and I know they're ready. I'm putting Tracer in charge with Mercy, Winston, and Genji in support. She's grown as a leader since the King's Row mission and I know you'll agree. 
Call me back when you get this. And Commander. Trust me, they'll get it done. Sojourn out. So as you can see in that video, lots of really interesting things there. I can make an entire video on just that video uh, alone, but of course interesting stuff, interesting lore things in there about Tracer, about Reinhardt, about what is going on with the team, and of course about a mission to, I guess, find Maximilian, maybe capture Maximilian. I don't know exactly if that's what it is, but there was a second tweet the following day, which had this video. There's no audio in this video. Well, there is, but it's all sound effects. There's no nothing you can listen to in this video. So we got another look at what looks like the Havana map, which looks like it'll either be escort or hybrid. Uh, I'm leaning a little bit more towards hybrid because we got escort in the last one, but I feel like also it could just be a, um, a I, I don't think it'll be control because that doesn't make a lot of sense. Hybrid and escort are the two oldest of the two map types we got, but we got an escort map with the last archives event. So who knows, but we got to look at that. And of course we got to look at Maximilian in this video. So it's a very interesting uh, set of teases we've had so far. Like I said last week, Jeff Kaplan mentioned a developer update coming at some point this week. This is what I said it would be about, most likely, and I expect that's what it'll be. Uh, it'll maybe be today when you're watching this video. It might be tomorrow. I have no idea. Um, we'll have to wait and see if it even comes out this week. It might come out um, next week because the event starts next week. But typically, they try to do them before the events to talk about what's coming up. Um, so there might be something at the Overwatch League uh, on Thursday or Friday. Uh, there was stuff in the Overwatch League last year for Retribution. I think that was on the, the second day of the week when they talked about that. So there could be some stuff coming up. There could be some stuff that we get to see more information on on an Overwatch League stream like we did last year, but we don't know that yet. Uh, in terms of new content, uh, we did see that there will be nine skins. I don't know how many of those will be epics, how many of those will be legendaries, but there will be nine skins. And it was, I believe, three... Highlight intros, so that's at least that's what we know of uh, for sure coming to the event. Um, it was on the archives page, which is linked in the description. Um, when I'm looking at it right now, um, it's not there, but I'm going to refresh just to check. Nope, it is still there again. So yes, so there's three new highlight intros and three or nine new skins. How many of them are epic? How many of them are legendaries? Not sure, but. I'm sure as the skins get revealed on Twitter, they'll start to show up here on the archives website. It's a very interesting looking website, really cool looking thing, so it's linked in the description down below. But that is everything we have so far about archives. As I said, um, if any other information comes out, of course, be on the lookout on Twitter, uh, on any social media platform that uh, Overwatch has. They've been dropping things uh, uh, about noon Eastern time. Uh, for the past several days, so when this video goes live, uh, check Twitter, see if there's anything new. Um, if there's not, check in every so often, every hour or so, and if there's nothing by like 8 p.m., probably not going to be anything, but like I said, always just kind of check in every so often, see if there's anything new, but uh, right now, that is everything we have and know about for this event this year, so that is everything I have for you. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you're excited for the Archives event. It is by far my favorite event. Uh, I love it. So I'm really excited to get Archives again, play some more Uprising again, play some Retribution again, and of course play a bunch of Storm Rising. Um, so I'm hopefully going to have a couple videos out when that drops on skins and unlockables and also maybe my own playthrough of Storm Rising for the first time. Uh, ooh, the heroes, I forgot to mention in the video, they talked about the heroes. Tracer, uh, Reinhardt, or Tracer, Winston, Genji, and Mercy. Those are the heroes you might be able to play as, and that's what I assume who you'll play as. So, uh, like I said, keep on keep your eyes out for a dev update or for any other teases on Twitter, but I'm going to get out of here. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoy, consider liking and subscribing, as it means a lot and helps out the channel a bunch, but... I'm getting out of here. Once again, thank you for watching, and see you all next time. Bye-bye.